On this series before, we've covered uncontrolled decompression, when the Soyuz 11 space capsule lost pressure above Earth, resulting in the only deaths in space to this day. The crew of Soyuz 11 suffered under the effects of gradual decompression, but the speed and violence of decompression is governed by the size of the pressure vessel, the differential pressure between the inside and outside of the vessel, and the size of the leak hole. So what does a more rapid and forceful decompression do to the human body? Today we will be looking at an incident of explosive decompression. The Bifur Dolphin is an offshore drilling rig owned by Dolphin Drilling, a Norwegian drilling contractor that operates in the North Sea. The Bifur Dolphin has seen a number of fatal accidents, but the one we'll be looking at today occurred in 1983, while the rig was drilling in the Frigg gas field in the North Sea. A diving bell is a chamber designed to transport divers from the surface to depth so that the divers may perform underwater work. Diving bell generally doesn't have any internal controls for movement and is instead lowered by a winch. In concept, they're like an underwater elevator. A crucial feature of the diving bell is its ability to maintain a great internal pressure. As the bell must be opened underwater to allow the divers to exit, the bell must be pressurized internally to match the external pressure. This ensures that water does not flood the bell when the hatch is opened. In fact, the first diving bells, or wet bells, were not sealed at all, but open at the bottom. When they were lowered into the water, the air has nowhere to escape, thus creating a pocket of breathable air for the divers. The same thing can be demonstrated by submersing a glass in the kitchen sink. However, as the bell submerses further underwater, the pressure of the water increases, and it compresses the air as it slowly fills the chamber. The further down it goes, the more water is pushed in, and the smaller the breathing space becomes. We've since made many advances with the technology, and diving bells are now sealed, and the internal pressure can be increased to match the massive external pressure. When the diving bell is brought back up to surface, it needs to be slowly decompressed back down to surface pressure before the occupants can leave. A little bit like how scuba divers must time their ascent very slowly to allow for a very gradual decrease in pressure. That process takes hours. Ascending too fast will cause decompression sickness, otherwise known as the bends, where the loss of pressure results in bubbles forming in the blood. The advantage of a diving bell is that instead of slowly timing the ascent in the water, which could potentially be dangerous, the decompression can be done entirely on the surface in a controlled environment, a decompression chamber. The diving bell is attached and locked to the decompression chamber, and then the divers migrate into the chamber, where the pressure is slowly reduced from the very high pressure that was required in the diving bell at depth to the surface pressure. Now the divers are free to leave the chamber. This is exactly what was happening on the Bifur Dolphin at 4 a.m. Saturday, the 5th of November, 1983. Four divers, Edwin Coward, Roy Lucas, Bjorn Bergeson, and Truls Elevik were in the chamber waiting to be decompressed. Outside the chamber, two dive tenders, William Crammond and Martin Saunders, are assisting the men. The pressure inside the chamber is nine atmospheres. It must be decompressed to the external ambient of surface pressure one atmosphere. The diving bell is clamped to the chamber via a trunk, which the divers travel through to get into the chamber. Then the diving bell door must be closed, and the pressure inside the diving bell is slightly increased to seal the bell door more tightly. The door from the chamber to the trunk is then closed. The trunk is slowly depressurized and the diving bell is removed. The chamber can now be decompressed. Following this procedure, the diving bell door was closed and sealed after the four divers had taken their place in the chamber. But before diver Halevik could close the trunk door, something went wrong. For some reason, Tender Crammond opened the clamp between the diving bell and the trunk before the trunk was sealed. A catastrophic error. The chamber explosively decompresses from a pressure of nine atmospheres to one atmosphere. The diving bell is propelled from the system striking both tenders. Tender Crammond is killed. Tender Saunders is severely injured. Inside, the four men have just been subjected to incredible force. The air would be forced from their lungs violently, causing substantial damage. The reduced pressure causes ebulism, formation of gas bubbles in the body, 
which results in tissue damage. In explosive decompression, great force is exerted out of the leak in the vessel. This caused the diving bell to be propelled from the trunk. But inside the chamber, everything is rushing towards the hole. Diver Halevik is standing beside that hole, being subjected to the greatest pressure gradient. The circular door is jammed, leaving a crescent-shaped opening, which is 24 inches across at its widest point. Halevik is sucked into the opening. The extreme force tears Halevik apart and projects his internal organs outside the chamber. While Halevik's body saw the most extreme trauma, the three other divers are also killed. An investigation concluded the cause of the accident was human error, with Tender Crammond opening the clamp before Halevik had closed the trunk door. The outdated diving system lacked fail-safes to prevent this, and why he did this is unknown. It's speculated there had been a miscommunication between Halevik and Crammond, but it's a mystery they took with them to the grave. Who can say what went through their minds during their last moments?